Lord have mercy, Lord help me, Lord be with me. Let's get into it. It has been way too long since I sat down and just played with makeup and chatted with you guys. As I said in this video, 2022 for me was like truly about surviving, not thriving. And I really want to push myself in 2023 to like have more fun. And so I purchased a bunch of new makeup recently. I did a haul, but then I also got more stuff in in an online order that I placed in Sephora. So some of this I've tried, some of it I haven't, and I am scared. I'm straight up scared of some of these products. I am gonna be trying a cream contour, a cream blush, and a cream highlight. Those things scare me. I'm also gonna be trying the Say Dupe for the drunk elephants. I think they're called like debronzy drops or something. Now, I would usually only use this one when I have a fake tan on, cause hello, this, your girl is fair skinned, okay? Um, but I'm like all covered. I'm literally wearing a turtleneck, leggings. The only thing exposed is my face and hands. So I'm thinking I could just like, I have an instant fake tanner from Sandra Pay, so I'm thinking I could just like put it on my hands. Plus I'm actually not leaving the house today because I'm not, um, but also it's kind of like a good day to experiment with new makeup in case like the cream contour and stuff looks terrible. I'm not going anywhere. I can just take it off and sit at home in my loungy wear. So look, I'm about to look cray cray. Okay, this color is gonna look nuts on me, I think, but I did use this shade once when I did have fake tan and like nobody said a damn thing. People said I looked great. So hopefully they weren't lying. But basically in this video, you guys are gonna be my mirror. So for those of you who can see, you gotta be my my honest but polite mirror, okay? You've gotta be kind with your honesty. Choose your words carefully because I blow things up in my mind. <laughs> and for those who can't see, I'm just gonna kind of talk you guys through how I do experiment with new makeup and new products. Um, when it comes to complexion products, when I'm trying something new, I'm about to go in with my foundation, it's the House Labs one, I always use my hands because it allows me to feel the texture, whether it's the primer, the foundation, the concealer, I always use my hands to apply it, which is not how I typically apply things on a day-to-day -day basis. But when I'm trying to figure out like the consistency, the texture, how it blends, I like to use my hands because it allows me to feel that the way somebody would see it in the mirror. Also, I am using a mic today, a laugh mic. Let me know what you think of the audio quality, if it's improved, if you like it. Hopefully it works well. I am actually currently in LA when you're watching this. I'm pre-filming it because I wanna try these products out to know if I should bring some of them with me or not. But yeah, you guys gotta be my mirror because I don't know. Neve Burke, how, how do I look? That looks really good. I, the first one you put on was really- Dark. Dark. Yes. But then it faded really fast. Yeah. The other one, it's like supposed to boost your skin. Like it's oh. supposed to give you like a tan glow under your foundation. Okay. So like it helps you match if you're fake tanned. I don't know, you guys let me know. And I'm gonna go in with the Rose Ink Concealer. I have been using these two. I really like this foundation and this concealer's like good from what I can tell. Like I can't see coverage and stuff, right? I can't see creasing. I can't see any of that, but I like the consistency. So that's all I can tell you. But usually I've been using the I do put it on my eyelids as well, by the way, my concealer. Usually I have been using the, say, called like Starlight one instead of Sunlight. So it's the like lighter skin tone. It's more like the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, that's the one I've been using every single day. It does match my skin tone when I'm fair. But today I was like, let's be bold and be wild. And the sight of people could tell me what's up on the internet. Okay, I have been blending this out with my finger. I think this is actually my first time blending it out with a sponge. So I might've sheared it out a bit too much. But that's the difference one side to the other. No concealer on the lid or under the eye, and then concealer. So you guys tell me, you be the judge. I really wish we were on like FaceTime right now or on live stream so you guys could actually tell me in real time, like give me advice. Cause I know I've got some real makeup girlies on here who could give me the tea on how I'm looking. If you don't know, I made a video a few months back. It's this one right here where I kind of talked about the fact that when sighted people use descriptive words, it can be really difficult for me to understand what those descriptive words actually mean because I've never seen the thing that the descriptor word is about. So like when people talk about pores, I've never seen them. So it's really hard for me to understand them. When people talk about fine lines and wrinkles, when people talk about concealer creasing, product transferring, like any of those things, I can't actually really conceptualize it. I try my best, but it can be really difficult. That's why I say like, be honest with me, but pick your words carefully. Like don't use harsh words. Cause then I just like 
I exaggerate it in my mind, which is why I think it's important to get an honest mirror that understands that. Like there's ways to be honest whilst still being kind and, and understanding of the fact that I as a blind person don't necessarily have the same reference points that sighted people have. Do I have any spots I need to cover up? I have one healing. My skin has been freaking bomb, you guys. Oh my God. When I tell you, I had a barrier breach, a barrier breach, okay? My skin barrier was really messed up when I went from LA to Toronto to BC, all in like the span of four days. I think the stress of moving, the flights, long flights, um, three different weathers in such a short span. It's just my skin barrier, it got so messed up. My skin was inflamed, it was burning. I was panicking. And the Kate Somerville Delicate Serum and Moisturizer changed my damn skin. It got rid of my acne. I've always struggled with dehydrated skin, but I never realized that I think my dehydration in my skin was what was causing the acne. And I think that the Delicate line like really helped soothe and hydrate my skin. And has my skin not been so good? The best it's been in years. It's wild. Okay, now I'm gonna, s no, I can't set. Oh my goodness, I would usually set at this point and move on to my powder products. But this is where the scary part begins, you guys, okay? I'm not gonna lie. Doing things like this makes me feel very vulnerable. And that sounds silly, because I'm simply playing with makeup and sighted girls and boys and in betweens, the gays, the theys, the bays, all of them sit down and play with makeup all the time um, and experiment with new products, but they can like react in real time and be like, oh no, that doesn't look good. I can't. So I could be looking like a damn fool and have no idea. I don't want people to watch this and be like, oh, she's so cute, trying to play with makeup like a little kid. Like, I don't want people to pity me or give me sympathy if it doesn't look good and I don't know that. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes me feel self-conscious. So I'm putting myself out there right now, you guys. This is what it looked like when I was playing with makeup for the first time as a blind girl at 12 and 13 and 14 years old, but with every product. Some of them instantly worked and some of them I was terrible at. And I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. And I kind of talked about this in my fashion tips video. Um, tips for blind fashion lovers. Like if you want to learn about fashion, whether you're sighted or blind, if you feel like you're not good with fashion and you want to get better, it's like anything. It is at, at the end of the day, it's part talent, part skill and education. You can learn about these things. And so if you're not good at makeup, like practice, learn about it, watch videos and tutorials and learn about new techniques. And that's what I do. And so I got this, this is the Merit like bronzing contouring stick. I got the shade clay, which I was color matched to from a girl at Sephora. I really liked the shape of this one because it it's more of an oval shape than like a big circle. So I feel like it might like kind of hug the areas better given the shape of it. But I've also heard people say with contour sticks, it's actually better to like apply it to the back of your hand or apply it to a brush and then stipple it in. I don't know, I'm panicking. I think I'm just gonna swipe it on. I quite literally don't even know like where to put it. Okay, I'm stressed. Just a contour stick. Where's my sponge? Okay, I've got my sponge got my product and I've got this kind of pretty dense, big brush. I feel like maybe this will help me like blend it out a bit. Lord have mercy, Lord help me, Lord be with me. Let's get into it. I believe this shade is like quite light. Like there's one shade lighter and I think that's the shade. She said it just blended right into my skin. Like this is the shade that will give a little bit of color. Also, I feel like people are gonna ask about this hairband cause it's so stinking cute. I got it in a pack of three at Anthropology. Okay, can you see that mom? When well, now that you blended it, I don't see it that much. When it first went on, I could see it, but it was really quite dark. Okay, but so and I feel like- it looks like it's gone. Like gone or just blended in? I'm gone. So does it look the same as this side now? Yeah. This is so strange. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe I blended too much. Am I even putting it in the right spot, you guys? And do I even need to do this? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, no, you don't. Like literally you don't even need to wear makeup. It's, but I enjoy makeup and I enjoy experimenting. And it's something I've always been curious about trying. Okay, what about that side? Yeah, maybe a little, I don't see it that much. But... Hmm, okay, here, I'm gonna put my finger like right above my ear. I usually do contour-ish with like a bronzing powder. I kind of like do the three E with like a floofy brush and then I kind of just powder it out. Oh, I don't, I feel like that was too low. Okay, this is stressful. This is so much harder than a powder. I don't even know, like I'm blending so quickly cause I'm like, is it gonna dry down and set on my face? Blended? Yeah, it's, again, it's so blended that it's gone to me. This is weird. Okay, this isn't easy, you guys. I feel like people always like contour from like below the ear under the jaw. That said, I have a super strong jawbone. Like some would say it's a masculine jawline. 
It's it's Good. defined naturally. Might as well do what everybody else does. Although contour is meant to be based on your face shape, which is what's so hard because it's like we're watching people t teach us how to do it, but they have a different face shape to us. And the contour is meant to ba be based on the shape of your face. I have a square face, which I have heard is the least attractive face shape. Mm -hmm. Yes. Scientifically, a square face is the ugliest face a woman could have. <laughs> It's because it's a masculine shape. It's not viewed as feminine. Don't listen to that. Don't listen to the square face shaped haters. Square faces are beautiful. Okay, now I feel like if this is the only one you could see, I feel like I need to blend that more. So you can't see it anymore either. So I don't know if that did basically anything. I'm gonna go in with the blush. This is the Merit blush that I showed in my original haul. She said at Sephora that I can just kind of plop it right on the face. I got the lightest shade. So again, if it's terrible, it'll blend out well. What color does that look like? That looks, it's like a pretty pink, but don't ask me to find which kind of pink. You know, I wanna say that just because powder products work better for me as a blind girl, like any blind makeup lover, you gotta find what works for you. Because Ella Shea, met her in this video, who I went to guide dog training with, she is also a blind makeup lover and she uses cream contour and cream blushes all the time. So just because I struggle with this, does not mean you, as a blind makeup lover, will also struggle with this. What does it look like? It's pretty, but you can already see it. Like, it's very, very light. <clears throat> okay, my foot's falling asleep, you guys. So I'm basically just putting it where I would usually put my brush with powder. Oh, pfft, I didn't use the sponge. Oh, actually, maybe let's use the sponge on this side and I'll see which blends it out nicer, the brush or the sponge. This video is about experimenting. Okay, how's that side, Mom? You can see it a little bit more. Let's go in for a second coat. See how buildable she is. So when I'm experimenting with new color products, so blushes, bronzers, shadows, highlights, I always have to get a lot of feedback at first from people in my life so I can understand how pigmented it is. Cause some products are just more pigmented than others. So sometimes I get a new blush, I do one swipe and I look like a damn clown because they're just super pigmented and on my fair skin, they just really pop. And I have to blend it down and blend it down and blend it down. And then other blushes, it's the opposite. I do like three swipes and it's just like so sheer. So color products at first, until I get to know how pigmented they show up on my skin, I'm always asking for feedback. Okay, did that build a bit more? A little bit more, yeah. Are they even or should I put a bit more on this side? Yeah, a little bit more on the other side now. Okay. I don't know if this cream life is for me, you guys. I know it's hydrating and dewy and all that jazz. It's very youthful, but I don't know. But this is why we test and see. Let's go in now to the cream highlight. I am really excited about this. The reviews on Sephora for this product were glowing. No pun intended. This is the RMS Beauty Living Luminizer. I was shook. Does anyone say that anymore? Am I aging myself? I was very surprised when I opened it and felt the size. I don't even wanna say how much this costs. I was disturbed. I was like, how is this this tiny? So this better be good. Does it look pretty? Yes, very pretty. Let's see if I can see it in the it's light. Like a, it's white. But shimmery. Shimmery, yes. Okay, so the review said it look, looks very glossy. Dip my finger in, warm it up a bit. That's what it looks like on the finger. I don't know if you guys can see. My fingers are probably dirty with foundation. How does it look? Can you see it? Yes, I can see it there. Okay, I'm gonna dot it up my nose on my cupid's bow. I'm gonna use my finger with this product to blend so I can be more precise. I'm gonna put it on my brow bone. I believe it's like a very glossy highlight as opposed to like glittery or shimmery. It's just glossy, like dewy looking, which intrigued me because all of my powder highlights are, of course, more like frosty or shimmery. A product like this will last a long time. So I guess I can forgive it in being tiny, but for the price, Jesus. Just putting some on my tear duct. Also, I think it's so funny that everyone's been doing the like white eyeliner in the waterline as if that's like an entirely new makeup thing. Like I was doing that back in high school, way back. <laughs> More than 10 years ago. Everything comes back around. Trend, the trend cycle nowadays with everything is just so fast, it's wild. I'm just doing it on my cheekbones, kind of around my temples, a little bit above the brow, patting it in. Okay, how's that looking, Neve? 
Yeah, I mean, all of these products are meant to look very natural. So, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people then kind of go in and put powder over. It's almost like this is the base. So I'm gonna go and put just a little bit of my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, which is a very light shade of hip pan. Like that's what I would usually use. Yeah, you can definitely see that. And then I'm gonna just put my normal, this has been my everyday blush for the past couple of months because I've been living out of my travel beauty mat bag. And it is the Estee Lauder Mauve Mystique, I believe it's called. So this is a very pigmented blush on me and I often accidentally put too much. So I'm just gonna do one quick tap. How's that looking? That See, this is the stuff I usually use. Now I feel like I'm just, like is there even a point to putting the cream down? These are the moments, like, as a beauty lover, I wish I could just see other people so I can see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna use the cloud set to set my under eyes. I really should have set them earlier, but because I was moving into cream products, I just got distracted and stressed. But the Kosas cloud set is really nice. It's my, probably my, oh my God, I just set where I put my highlight. Oh, Experimenting with new products is stressful, you guys. But this is probably my favorite pressed setting powder I've ever tried. The cloud set by Kosas. I'm just gonna set. The areas I haven't put powder down, so like my T-zone, chin, kind of under my contour. I feel like I'm probably looking like a mess. No, you don't look like a mess. Sure. And I can see that. Can you still see my highlight or did I just set it all down? I think so. See, the thing is my mom is my mirror, but I'm like, mom, you need to start watching beauty content. To really know. To really know what's up. And she wants to. Yeah. You always say, you're like, I wish I, Oh, I'd love knew to. more about makeup. I think I'm just gonna use, what do I wanna use? Mm, you know what, I'ma just throw on some Laguna bronzer all over my lid. Cause this isn't about eyeshadow today. This was about experimenting with my cream products. I love cream shadows, I do. This is not one, but I love cream shadows. I really like the Charlotte Tilbury one. I think it's like eyes to mesmerize or something. My leg is so asleep. Okay, I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush with nothing on it and just blend out the crease to make sure there's no harsh line. You know, maybe these products are good for like a no makeup makeup day, you know? Like put my Ilia skin tint on, Kosas concealer, some like Merit blush, just very, very minimal makeup. Maybe that's the vibe. I was gonna set it, but I'm not. I'm probably just taking this off after. <laughs> I'm gonna use my eyelash curler. I have this little Ilia mascara sample, but I think I'm gonna use the Lawless one. I really like the Lawless mascara. Your girl has been struggling to find a good mascara. I have very straight lashes, like my hair. My hair is very straight and so are my lashes. It's very hard to find a mascara that really like lifts and holds my lashes up. Sorry about my vocal fry today, you guys. I feel like I'm having a lot of vocal fry. Ah, I need to do my vocal exercises. <laughs> Your makeup's looking really good. Mm -hmm. Well, I did just put the same powders I always use over top of everything, so I don't know if... Yeah. Well, maybe it's <clears> a nice base. Yeah, I don't know. I need you to help me. Help me. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people are scared of eyelash curlers. They don't scare me. I don't know. I just basically close my eyes and maybe this will help you. If you're scared of it, like you're scared seeing it come towards your eye, maybe do what I do and just close your eyes, take the curler in one hand, line it up the best you can, then use your other hand to feel the lashes, fully get them in there and then pinch down. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, I'm gonna use this Lawless Mascara. I like it. It's very dried out at this point. Well, it's not like the bottom of the barrel. My favorite technique of all time, the pinch the bridge of the nose technique. Nobody looks cute when they do mascara. Okay, I always do two coats. I don't know about anybody else. It's so hard to talk and do mascara. You guys know it is always the thing that I've struggled with the most. I just flip the wand this way, like upright when I'm doing my bottom lashes. I often get mascara transfer on my like bottom lashes, but I also just never want to not do my bottom lashes. I don't know why. So I kind of just accept that sometimes I get transfer. I also try afterwards, I let the mascara dry and then I use just a clean spoolie. I have some that I get on Amazon that are disposable, but I'll use them like multiple times before I actually dispose of them. Oh, see, I just got transfer. It's okay, I can try to clean it up at the end. But like, look at all that, that would have been on my nose on both sides. This technique works. A savior, false lashes. That's one that I'd love to like, push myself to try to do. Cause I know there are blind girls out there who do it or blind makeup lovers in general. 
But as we know, as I always say, just because one person can do something doesn't mean everybody can because there are plenty of sighted people that are great at putting on fake lashes and there are plenty of sighted people who suck at putting on fake lashes. So I try my best not to put the pressure on myself that like just because one blind girl can do it, I should be able to do it. Like I think that's BS. I just want to try to push myself. Okay, I'm going to let my lashes dry a bit. I'm actually going to use the spoolie to first just kind of brush through my brows. I have very straight hair naturally. Like, <laughs> this is my curls that fell to basically straight. I just have very straight hair as you guys know, which is why my lashes are very straight, but also it means my eyebrow hair is very straight. So that's nice. I never feel like I really need to gel them down or anything because they're never really unruly since the hairs are so straight and fine. Like my real hair, my real hair. These are my real hair, but you know, my head hair, <laughs> not my face hair. Okay, I'm gonna try a new lip combo and I want you guys to tell me what you think. I've been looking for like good pinks. I got the Tower 28 lip gloss in coconut, which went viral. Apparently it's very good. And I got this Bare Minerals lipstick that said it was like, they both said like a light pinky nude. And I was like, maybe they look like pillow talk, probably not. But like, I'm hoping, I don't know, it's a good combo. So that's what the lipstick looks like. I tried it on and my parents both said it didn't look that pink. Okay, so I just feel for the slant. I find that just like classic creamy bullet style lipsticks are the easiest for me to apply without messing up. Though I do like, sometimes I like a lip crayon can be good. Um, matte lipsticks are always the hardest for me. Bold lipsticks are can be a bit difficult sometimes, but honestly, I can nail a bold lipstick if it's the right consistency. I love the Revlon vinyl lips. It's like the easiest thing for me to apply with a bold lip. Here, actually, could you grab the bag that has all my lippies in it? Okay, I'm gonna throw this lip gloss on. My mom's just grabbing my, some of my other lipsticks so I can show you. Thank you. Ooh, it's quite almost like watery like it's a really thin consistency apparently it's like very super shiny like very glossy which i love nice juicy lips get the excess off from the inside so you don't get it on your teeth i learned that back when i was a dancer mm. okay how does that color look yeah it goes super well with your outfit that was my hope that's why i picked this outfit i have a bunch of lippies here literally no damn clue where this bag came from where did i get it? like I've never seen this in my damn life. It just came out in the move. And I was like, these are my lipsticks inside of it, but where the hell did this bag come from? It even has like a plastic tag thing on it. Like, did the movers just pack my stuff in this as a ball? I'm so confused. If anybody's ever seen this, like did it come with a perfume purchase? Sometimes I wear sticky lip or like liquidy lip glosses. They make me sound like I'm spitting. I think it's the Revlon Vinyl HD. What is it called? Revlon Ultra HD Vinyl. One of my favorite lipstick formulas of all time. Definitely my favorite drugstore formula I've ever tried. Even in a bold color, I find these very easy to apply. It's basically like a lip gloss, but with lipstick pigment. Anyways, I'm gonna curl through my lashes now. Curl through, comb through. So I just close my eyes and I just kind of Helps them separate. Make sure I don't get any clumps. Then I feel my lashes, like kind of blink into them. I'll kind of go like this. Sorry if this looks weird, to try to comb out my bottom ones. I would like to reiterate, I'm by no means great at makeup. Pretty much entirely self-taught, just trial and error and practice. I love makeup, so I put the effort in, but that does not mean I'm necessarily great at it. Take everything I do and say with like a grain of salt, you know? Basically, that's the finished look. Do we have any thoughts? It's, I personally think it's beautiful. All right, I don't know. I don't really have a verdict. Like I need you guys to come up with the verdict. I trust Mama B, but you know, she's a 60 something year old woman who doesn't know all that much about makeup. In fact, most of what she knows about makeup is from me. And that is true. It's not that I don't trust you, but I'd like the internet's opinions. Let me know what you've thought of this. Thanks for hanging out with me and just like chatting, going through my process with you, if you will. I don't know how to wrap this up. Let me know some of your favorite beauty products that you think I should check out or things that you think I should try to experiment with, push myself, push my limits. Uh, and if you wanna see another time I tried to push my limits and do something new, you can check out this when I curled my hair as a blind girl, or you can check out one of my super old school makeup videos where I tried products that scared me. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Bye.